We're in Exodus 25 today, and we're going to be reading about the tabernacle, a tent, and its furniture. Doesn't sound too promising, does it? So uh, um, uh, before we get into it, let me just explain for those of us who are worshipping at South Craven and Emmanuel and following the RVT scheme and watching these videos, not everyone is. Um, we're in Hebrews and um, in Hebrews 8, which we're going to be looking at on Sunday evening. Um, it explains that this um, uh, plan that God gave to Moses around this uh, uh, tent uh, was a shadow of the reality of what's going on. It's a picture um, of uh, God's presence and how we get right with him and how we come into God's presence um, and points us to Jesus. So suddenly a tent and its furniture uh, becomes much more significant. So let's read Exodus 25. Um, the whole chapter. The Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. You are to receive the offering for me from everyone whose heart prompts them to give. These are the offerings you are to receive from them, gold, silver and bronze, blue, purple and scarlet yarn and fine linen, gold, goat hair, ram skins dyed red and another, and, and another type of durable leather, acacia wood, olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense and onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastpiece. Then let them make a sanctuary for me and I will dwell among them. Make this tabernacle and all its furnishings exactly like the pattern I will show you. Let them make an ark of acacia wood, two and a half cubits long, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit and a half high. Overlay it with pure gold, both inside and out, and make a gold molding around it. Cast four gold rings for it and fasten them on its four feet with two rings on one side and two rings on another. Then make a poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Insert the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to carry it. The poles are to remain in the rings of this ark. They're not to be removed. Then put the ark, put in the ark the tablets of the covenant law, which I will give you. Make an atonement cover of pure gold two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide and make two cherubim out of hammered gold at the ends of the cover. Make one cherub on one end and the second cherub on the other. Make the cherubim of one piece with a cover at the two ends. The cherubim are to have their wings spread upwards, overshadowing the cover with them. The cherubim are to face each other, looking towards the cover. Place the cover on top of the ark and put it in the ark. The tablets that put in the ark, the tablets of the covenant law that I will give you. There above the cover between the two cherubim that are over the ark of the covenant law, I will meet with you and give you all my commands for the Israelites. Make a table of acacia wood, two cubits long, a cubit wide and a cubit and a half high. Overlay it with pure gold and make a gold molding around it. Uh, also make around it a rim a hand breadth wide and put a gold molding on the rim. Make four gold rings for the table and fasten them onto the four corners where the four legs are. The rings are to be close to the rim to hold the poles used in carrying the table. Make the poles of acacia wood, overlay them with gold and carry the table with them. Make its plates and dishes of pure gold, as well as its pitchers and bowls for the pouring out of offerings. Put the bread of the presence on this table to be before me at all times. Make a lampstand of pure gold, hammer out its base and shaft, and make its flower-like cups, buds, and blossoms of one piece with them. Six branches are to extend from the sides of the lampstand, three on one side and three on the other. Three cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms are to be on one branch, three on the next branch, and the same for all six branches extending from the lampstand. And on the lampstand there are to be four cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms. One bud shall be under the first pair of branches extending from the lampstand, a second bud under the second pair, and a third bud under the third pair, six branches in all. The buds and branches shall be all, all be of one piece within a lampstand, hammered out of pure gold. Then make it seven lamps and set them up on it so that they light the space in front of it. Its wick trimmers and trays are to be of pure gold. A talent of pure gold is to be used for the lampstand and all these accessories. See that you make them according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. So the Lord is very specific to Moses. Here is a pattern I am giving you for a tent and its furniture, and you must ensure that you make it according to the pattern. This is not humans attempt to reach up to God and their imagination about how they might do this. This is God's revelation to human beings about how they must worship him uh, and a pattern of how uh, to do that. And a pattern I say that Hebrews 8 will show us is significant for understanding uh, the work of Jesus. Uh, so here is a, a tabernacle, a tent. Remember these are people are on the move. They're nomadic. They're moving from slavery in Egypt, which they've been rescued from uh, through the wilderness into the land uh, of promise. 
Um, so they're on the move. And so this has to be a portable a temple, as it were, um, tabernacle. Um, there, the people are invited to give gifts to, to the making of it, um, of all sorts of practical things, both the gold and silver, but also the, uh, the, 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 the ram skins, the, the olive oil, and all sorts of other things that can come together to, to make this. Um, and uh, we're told in verse 8 that this is all about a sanctuary for God so that he can dwell amongst his people. Here's, here's the picture. Uh, the tabernacle is, is God's dwelling, uh, and he's going to go with the people. He's going to be present with his people uh, symbolically in uh, this tent. Um, and this tent then in the way that it's structured and made and the furniture that goes into it uh, is helping the people to understand who God is and also how they approach him. Uh, and so the, the first thing that is described, the first piece of furniture, is the is the Ark of the uh, Covenant, uh, so-called, because uh, uh, inside this Ark, a frankly wooden box, um, are the, the two stones with the, the Ten uh, Commandments, the, the, as it were, the contract of their relationship uh, with God. Um, and uh, this Ark symbolizes then the basis of their relationship uh, with God. But on top of this ark then are two cherubim, uh, two uh, uh, angelic beings um, that uh, whose uh, wings are to, to reach out. And um, that reminds us of the cherubim guarding the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve were thrust out. Uh, uh, um, uh, heavenly bouncers, if you like, almost um, denying presence to sinful people. Um, and, and those two cherubim are sitting over what is called the the atonement uh, seat, the, uh, the cover uh, of the ark is given this uh, name uh, of, of the atonement cover. Um, and uh, this cover then uh, symbolizes the basis on which um, this covenant is able to be maintained. Um, and it's to do with atonement. Um, and that's, if you like, at one month, a, a, a way of um, a payment or uh, provision uh, that two parties can be reconciled and um, uh, sin can be atoned for, forgiven, um, dealt with, uh, so that relationship can be uh, restored. And then a table is to go in, uh, as well as the uh, ark, um, and the bread of the presence is on this table, symbolic, this, this bread of uh, God's provision, um, and then a lampstand. Uh, this lampstand is going to provide a perpetual light through the uh, time of uh, the tabernacle's function. Um, it's very interesting then that Jesus is going to come and say, I am the light of the world. I am uh, I am the bread of life. Um, and that uh, in 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, we read this. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. And so very clearly and very um, plainly, we are seeing this furniture um, as it's set out for uh, this functional uh, of, of, of God's presence in, in the midst of his people, pointing us to uh, the Lord Jesus uh, Christ, a very tangible, physical uh, representation of the, the heavenly realities uh, for the people um, of Israel and pointing them to um, the, the, the significance of God being present with them, the reminder that they need to be keeping the law, the reminder that there's a way of atonement through sacrifice, uh, the reminder that the cherubim will keep out the ungodly, um, and, and yet God's provision of, of light and, and bread um, for his people as they uh, maintain the covenant relationship. Um, as we saw um, uh, last yesterday or, or the day before, um, they're not going to be able to do that. They, this covenant is not keepable because it requires their obedience. Um, and that's the lovely thing uh, of the new covenant. Um, but all of this you can see is beginning to point us uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so uh, let's think about uh, what's going on here, the symbolism, um, and uh, also the, the sacrifice that the people are going to make to facilitate this, that they're going to bring their gifts um, to facilitate that work. We don't need to bring gifts in, in a sense now to uh, decorate a building um, as a temple, uh, we are called in, in Romans, as we've just seen reading through that letter, that we are to bring ourselves as uh, living sacrifices in view of God's mercy uh, to, to transform us by the renewing of our minds, uh, to use our gifts, uh, our um, uh, uh, talents, 
not of money, but of, of, of gifts, uh, uh, resources, the things that we've been gifted to be able to do, um, stewarding our possessions for the, the building of uh, God's kingdom. Right, so let's pray and ask God's help as we reflect on these things. Father, reading about a tent and, and a box and a table and a lampstand doesn't seem particularly exciting until we realise that the heavenly significance of these items and how they better understand, uh, help us better understand the Lord Jesus Christ and the heavenly realities. And so, Father, we pray that as we read through the coming chapters, which don't uh, feel particularly exciting, if we're going to be reading about furniture and furnishings and um, case laws, uh, help us to be understanding how this prepares us um, for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, as we see the uh, call for the people to, to give freely uh, towards this, we pray, Lord, that you'd help us as we recognise that Jesus is the atoning sacrifice, as we recognise that uh, the new covenant does not require us to keep your rules because Jesus has done it for us, as we realise that the freedom and the joy that we have, not that we come to worship you in a physical sanctuary, in a tent, but actually that we uh, have become that sanctuary as the, the Holy Spirit dwells with us, that we might rejoice and, and freely give of all that we have uh, to follow Jesus and to bring others uh, to follow Jesus too. Uh, and we pray that you'd elicit this response from us as we think about these things in Jesus' name. Amen.